Hi, welcome back to Jim Cloud's whiteboard tutorial series. My name is Greg Keller. I am the company's chief product officer, and today we're here to talk to you about the release of our Active Directory Bridge component to the product. So as we've done in prior whiteboard sessions, what I'm going to do is use my trusty marker and simplify um, what is, frankly, a very simple piece of software uh, to connect Active Directory identities through JumpCloud out to cloud-based and other non-bound resources. When I say non-bound, I'm talking about things that are actually not connected to the Active Directory dom domain controller themselves, but still need governance with those Active Directory uh, user identities. So here's how all this plays out. So let's draw some boxes and we'll label each so you understand the different components in, in this transaction. The first is Active Directory itself. So this will be the Active Directory domain controller. This is the Windows 2008, 2012, or 2016 server upon which you have created the Active Directory services. Um, so again, your classic domain controller. And again, we support all three of those versions of Windows Server. So the next box, of course, is JumpCloud. And this box really is our cloud-based directory services. And we'll explain the relationship with these in detail in a second. I'm going to pause for a second in, in order to not draw the other boxes because I want to focus on the integration first and then we'll start talking about how these identities sort of get propagated out to all the cloud-based and frankly even some on-premise goodness that you still need using AD identities to authenticate but they're not directly bound to AD. So here it goes. So the first thing that an admin, you guys, will be doing will be to install a special domain controller agent that we have created. This agent is installed on, I'll just denote that as an A, as an agent. Uh, these uh, agents are installed on every domain controller. So for example, if you have a fairly elaborate forest of domain controllers that are all sort of interconnected, each of those domain controllers must have the pass, uh, I'm sorry, the AD bridge agent installed on it. Uh, this is to ensure that password propagations, no matter where the authentication or the password request change is coming in from, does get proper, properly caught and then securely transmitted out to JumpCloud. So great, your domain controller uh, it has been installed with the AD bridge agent, and frankly, it's a very simple process. That's all you need to do is this thing gets installed. It's a classic Windows installer, um, and it, it basically automatically creates the connection uh, to your uh, Jump Cloud host or your Jump Cloud uh, tenant, as it were. Now, the, thi the, the thing that you have to do within uh, your uh, Active Directory domain controller in the AD um, users and systems management area is to, number one, identify the user accounts you would like to propagate across. A good thing to note here is by virtue of this agent being installed does not mean all of your users and groups carry across. You get to be very selective on what you choose to propagate to JumpCloud. Perhaps it's just a subset of your organization, which is the very typical use case of our customer base. So number one, identify the users that need to be transported over into JumpCloud. And the second thing, I, I should include groups as well. So we'll denote this as some various security groups that you have built in Active Directory. The second thing is the creation of a security group called Jump Cloud. This is a, think of this as the security group that is the transporter. It is the thing we queue off of that will um, uh, have members added to it, so the users you want in the Jump Cloud um, security group and other ancillary nested groups that need to be in this group will then be carried across, including uh, their membership. So quite literally, what you get on the other end is an instantiation or a copy of, the, of those things, uh, but again, managed by Active Directory. So any 
Users and groups that you've added to the Gem Cloud group are kept in sync automatically. One thing to note, the Active Directory Bridge Agent, similar to Gem Cloud System Agent, is, in, is something that um, revolves on a cadence. In, in this case, the Active Directory Bridge Agent rotates on a roughly 90 second cadence listening for events like password changes, group membership changes, new users that get added, users that have their names changed, and so on. All of those transactions are replicated, fired across, and kept in sync with their Jump Cloud versions. So the, the, the main point to really drive home here is that Jump Cloud, while in, in this relationship, is not the authoritative source of the identity. That's what you're using Active Directory for in this case. Jump Cloud, when it receives those um, I, uh, user identities in system or security groups, are, are replicas. So what do you do with them? And this is sort of where the magic comes in. Jump Cloud is, as you know, um, when not using um, Active Directory, a full-blown directory. In fact, in many cases, it is a, uh, a replacement of or an alternative to Active Directory. But many of our customers do enjoy using AD, and that's awesome. But in this case, because we are a full-fledged directory, it means you get full-fledged protocol support. So let's walk through some use cases. Now that you've got a user and potentially some user groups now transplanted into Gem Cloud, what do you do with them? So you leverage the protocols. The first, here's where I start drawing the other boxes. So let's just talk about systems, all right? Again, Windows, as you know, Windows, Mac, and Linux systems are supported by Jump Cloud. In this transaction, you'll have, let's say, a laptop. Let's say it's a Windows or a MacBook that's uh, owned by a remote employee. The Jump Cloud system agent is installed on here. Your user account then, from propagated over from Active Directory, is then utilized uh, to authenticate and gain access to that machine without VPN. The most important thing to understand here is this machine is tied to Jump Cloud. There is no domain if you were to draw a dotted line. There is no need to install or insert systems in your Active Directory when this use case is happening, when you're using Jump Cloud. So our agent and its connection to Jump Cloud is that binding to what you as Active Directory people would know as sort of your domain. Um, but all of this is like the VPN not required in our transaction. We're using in this, in this particular transaction, like we do with all system management, it's all mutual TLS bound from the system agent, making requests outbound from this machine through port 443 to look for work to do. As an example, when the Active Directory password is changed in some way, perhaps this user on their laptop has gone into Office 365, changed their password, that whole process and chain will update everything, including that uh, window or MacBook's password. So again, it's a fully cyclic thing. We are slaving the changes from AD and just propagating them out. Another major use case very similar to uh, an employee's MacBook or Windows uh, instance, or if you're a developer using Linux on the Lenovo or whatever, is cloud-based servers. So again, the same sort of treatment applies here. We're gonna call this guy, this could be AWS, this or you know Google Cloud Platform, or Azure, it doesn't matter. The location of the cloud-based server, a virtualized server, doesn't matter to us. Because, again, you may have you know, a Linux server, so we'll call this guy Linux, and you may have a Windows server, we'll call this guy Windows, and one is in GCP, the other is in Amazon, and they, just like your uh, workstations or laptops, they have the system agent installed, and the same process occurs, port 443, no VPN, I mean, there may be, absolute circumstances where your employees need to, for privileged access, use VPN to get in and access your cloud-based infra, but our communication doesn't require that. That's the nuance that I, I really want to drive home. 
Another sort of very robust use case, again, is we'll draw another box. And let's assume that this is a, an, a remote office and you need people authenticating securely with their Active Directory creds, but you don't want to have to do all this elaborate networking and tunneling and, again, you know, virtual private networks. So use our RADIUS services. Perhaps, and again, the user identities are all Active Directory controlled identities, but you're using our protocol services, RADIUS in this case, to add a remote office, this is a wireless access symbol, to effectively authenticate you know, the wireless access points, Meraki, Mist, uh, among a myriad of others, Ruckus, uh, perhaps it's your switches or even local VPN um, clients that you have. All of that can be utilizing our infrastructure, our RADIUS infrastructure. It's all managed in the cloud. You don't touch any servers. You just have to propagate the identity from, in this case, AD over in a gem cloud. Here's another one. Let's say you have on-premise resources, or let's call them, I, I hate to use the term legacy because there's plenty of great infrastructure that utilize this protocol, but let's say it's resources that access uh, authentication through LDAP. Now, clearly Active Directory is the go-to place for that. In fact, it's built upon you know, the premise of LDAP, if not a, a snapshot of LDAP brought into Active uh, Microsoft's world. But let's say you have, um, oh, you have applications that, here's a good example. You have an application that is running on a Windows server uh, up in AWS, and let's assume it's an application that's critical like Jira or Confluence or some major ticketing system. And in this particular case, your application, whether it's web-based, or on-premise can authenticate through LDAP, but again, using, in this particular instance, the Active Directory credentials in order to authenticate and gain access to that particular application. So, again, the transaction here is Jump Cloud as a directory is playing the role of a huge service to your authoritative directory, Active Directory, in this use case. And the concept here is provide the ability for that AD managed identity to get propagated out and use various authentication services. Again, we talked about agents, we talked about LDAP, we talked about RADIUS. Another one that we didn't talk about was SAML, which we support. So the same AD set of creds can use SAML to federate to hundreds of applications, web-based applications that we have supported in the product. Again, without the installation of Azure AD Connect, what formerly known as DurSync, or any other complicated networking, install the agent, select your users and groups to propagate to Jump Cloud, point and click, and give them access to a variety of resources with minimal complication of networking and other pain that I know you associate uh, with trying to work with um, sort of on-premise directory software. Hope this is helpful. Um, we're extremely excited about the launch of our AD Bridge. And as always, if you have any other questions related to this, please contact us at sales at jumpcloud.com. Thanks for joining.